Ready to take your career to the next level? With an online master's in communication and leadership studies from Gonzaga University, you'll push boundaries, think critically, and sharpen your communication skills. Visit gonzaga.edu slash sharpen. Blog Talk Radio. Alternative facts. The following message is transmitted at the request of the United States government. At 12.07 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, numerous unidentified objects of a known intent and a known origin were detected at high altitudes over mutable locations of Earth's outer space by the National Radio Astronomy Observatory and these objects are presumed to be some form of controlled aircraft. It is not known if more of these aircraft will arrive or if they will attempt entering Earth's atmosphere. United States citizens are encouraged to monitor local media outlets, as more updates will follow as information becomes available. The following message is transmitted at the request of the United States government. Attacks by the undead have been reported in several states across the country. The dead are rising from their graves and are attacking the human race. At this time, it is expected that more attacks of this nature will occur in several other states in the next few hours. The intent behind the attack is unknown at this time. He has been observed that a bike for exchange of fluids is a method of transmission. This is an extremely dangerous situation if they crave the taste of human flesh. It is not known whether this event will last for hours, days, or even longer. Stay calm, as authorities have been dispatched to deal with these creatures. An all-clear siren will be sounded when this situation is under control. Your host, Rodney, the Viking Shortridge, co-host, Melinda, the Raven, Jackson. Want to give a big old shout out to the Facebook paranormal groups that allow us to post our shows on their pages and helping us to get the word out about all of our guests. Also, a shout out to the Connor Sisters, hats off to Misty and Ashley. They are the founders of SOS Sisters of Salem Paranormal Research Society and host of their podcast, Paranormal Party. You can find them on Facebook under Paranormal Party. If anyone would like to speak to Black Diamond Paranormal Society, BDPS, to discuss your paranormal questions or issues, go to our website at blackdiamondps.org or email blackdiamondps at yahoo.com. As always, our services are free. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight. You can listen in by calling 516 516- 387-1922 or you can go to the Vibe Radio Network website at blogtalkradio.com forward slash 
Vibe Radio Network. For deep within the heart of the Appalachian Mountains, I'd like to welcome everyone and thank you for listening to Within the Chaos. My name is Rodney Shortridge and I'll be your host tonight along with my beautiful Raven Melinda Jackson. First off, I'd like to give a shout out to my cousins up in Ohio. Jennifer and Joe Shortridge of 222 Paranormal. If you get a chance, check out their talk show. You can find them on Facebook under 222 Paranormal. Well, I just met Melinda, so uh, you know, say hi. Hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing good. That's good. Well, let me introduce our guest for tonight. Uh, tonight, our special guest is the mil- military medium, Dean McMurray. Dean is an international claimed psychic medium, healer, dowser, and ordained minister. His story is powerful and so authentic. It is like any other psychic medium out there. And it's why people from across the globe are drawn to him for readings and personal guidance. So um, what is his story? Why is he a psychic so many trust? Well, we'll find just those questions out tonight and some more. Uh, in just a few minutes, we ain't have him on. Um, so I'm getting, since we already said our, oh, no, I didn't ask you how your week was before I jump into this. Ah, oh, damn. Hot. So glad it's cooled off. <laughs> how was your week? Uh, <laughs> see, that's what I heard. Did you mean it like hot, like damn it's hot, or just hot? It was hot. Damn it's hot. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, let's go ahead and you know, see if we can get him home here because I see he's uh, checked in. And uh, it's my honor to welcome our special guest, the military medium, Dean McMurray. Hello, Dean, and how you doing? And thank you for joining us tonight. I'm doing great, guys. Thanks for having me on tonight. Oh, thank you, sir, for coming on the show, and it's an honor. And I, uh, first off, I want to thank you for your service and you know the sacrifices you you and your family have made for our nation. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Well, I guess we'll go ahead and crank this baby up. <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about yourself? <laughs> <laughs> sure, absolutely. Uh, well, you know, I grew up in a uh, right on the Canadian border, a little uh, border town called International Falls, Minnesota. Uh, right after high school, I joined the military like so many do. And, uh, of course, I went on to serve uh, about 14 years with the active duty Army uh, in various places around the world. Um, and then uh, after I got back from Afghanistan, that was probably in 2003, um, I went on to serve another 10 years uh, in the Army, but in the capacity of full-time Army National Guard uh, here in the state of North Dakota. Um, and, you know, um, as far as a lot of people say, well, that's great, Dean, and, you know, uh, and that that's all great. But, you know, how did you become a medium? Did you know prior? And the thing that I like to share is I was not open to mediums and psychics prior to all this. Um, you know, I was very much immersed in the world of, if you will, that alpha male mentality world in the military. And if anybody's familiar with the uh, occupations within the Army, I was uh, very much uh, in the uh, the world of the infantry. So, uh, you know, a ground soldier. And uh, about six of those years, uh, I was uh, on jump status. So I was a paratrooper for, for a few of those years. Um but the thing that I want to share is that it wasn't until my very last deployment um, where we went over to Kosovo. And uh, <clears throat> when I came back uh, from deployment um, was all this paranormal activity started happening in my home. And what I mean by paranormal activity is I'm talking about uh, pictures and clocks uh, flying off the wall. And for somebody that's not, open, <laughs> or at least at the time wasn't, um, to all this activity, um, it was unsettling at best. And my wife uh, had told me when I was overseas that she had seen a local psychic to have the home doused. And she wasn't really sure of my reaction. And I, <clears throat> I basically blew, blew it off. And I said, you know, whatever, 
you and your voodoo friends. I think that was the joke that I used. And, um, <laughs> and that, and, and that was very much my language because I wasn't open to those kind of things at that time. And, uh, when all this stuff happened, the first words out of my mouth was, you know, my wife's name's Marilyn. I said, Marilyn, you need to get a hold of your voodoo chick friend <clears throat> and have her come over and something weird is going on. And, uh, So this local psychic came over, and basically she had told me uh, that my deceased grandfather uh, was there. (coughs) Excuse me. And uh, I'm kind of looking sideways at my wife thinking, really, you know, how long is this lady going to be here? And, (laughs) you know, what what kind of uh, stuff she's smoking, right? And um, But I, I wasn't in a space to hear the message. I wasn't, I wasn't open. And, um, so long story short, uh, she basically just kind of said, well, you'll figure it out. And she left, um, and nothing got quieter, if you will. So the activity is going on and, and, uh, and everything. And a couple of weeks later, um, I was washing bottles late one evening and, uh, my deceased grandmother came to visit me now little premise to that, my grandmother passed, my mom's mom passed in the 80s. And uh, so when, when, uh, when, you know, when I knew that it was, you know, my grandmother, uh, it was, you know, I was kind of questioning myself, how do I know that it's my grandma? And uh, it was one of those things where I was really questioning myself back and forth. But that clear cognizance, that clear knowing just swept over me at the time, and I wasn't aware of it, but um, and where I just knew that it was grandma. And uh, I went to bed uh, knowing that she was there, and but my ego didn't want to accept it. So basically I'm thinking, why don't you just prove that you're here? If, you, if it's a fact, why don't you prove it? And as soon as I thought those words, and I'm laying at bed, in bed at this point, um, and basically where she turned the room absolutely ice cold instantly, um, you know, and I've always heard of those stories, whatever, and it, it completely had my attention. She had my attention immediately. Um, <laughs> and so I went on to talk to her one way, and I wasn't receiving anything at this point. And you know, about this time is when my, when my ego popped up again and saying, you know what, if this is, if I'm not making this up and if this is really real, why don't you just touch me? Um, and then we'll just put this to rest and we can really prove whether this is real or not. And as soon as I thought those words, uh, it was a gentle yet firm pressure from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet uh, that pushed me into the mattress and it was nothing mean. It didn't try to choke me or scratch me. It was gentle. Um, it was def- uh, she was there definitely to get my attention that evening. And it was something where I could feel myself going into the mattress and hear the springs compress um, within the mattress. And it was something that I couldn't deny. And, of course, you know, obviously it was like, holy crap, who did I, you know, did I break the fifth seal to hell? And, <laughs> you know, I'm kind of freaking out and, uh and so basically I, uh, I, I called the six year old, uh, scared little boy within me kind of said, all right, grandma, I'll love you. See you soon. Basically like, I need you to leave right now. And yeah. it was like, boom, it was like, boom, nothing like it never happened. But I sat up straight up in bed, completely covered in sweat and, uh, you know, completely freaked out and waking my wife up. And I said, there's somebody here. And she said, what do you mean? And I said, there is a spirit here. And she was like, how do you know that? And I said, you know what? That's a great question. I don't know. You need to get a hold of your voodoo chick friend. And uh, she was like, Dean, it's uh, 2.30 in the morning. You need to go back to sleep. Well, that was easier said than done, let me tell you. But um, fast forward some more time, and I ended up – taking some uh, classes to really understand what this all meant. I started uh, consuming books at a crazy rate, you know, uh, just trying to figure out what was going on and 
really immersing into my what I call my awakening and and uh you know I, I started being called the medium and I said you know I I was I was saying you know I was telling everybody they're full of you know what you're full of crap no I'm not and uh, cuz I didn't want it I didn't ask for it I didn't think hey that would be cool you know why don't I just be a medium I didn't want it I was very much still I had plans to be to work for the local VA after retiring. I did not. Uh, this was not part of my. <laughs> this was not part of my ten-year plan. Let me tell you. And uh, but you know they always say is uh, when man plans, God laughs, and the universe certainly was laughing because they were like, oh man, he doesn't even have a clue. And uh, uh, it was it was interesting. But I ended up. Um, trying to go on a journey to really figure out what mediumship meant for Dean McMurray and not what it meant for somebody else. And so taking, you know, took a class in mediumship. I took a class in dowsing, you know, where I really just consumed a tremendous volume of, of information. And, and after I took, uh, I guess, a class in mediumship and, and learning how to handle, because around this time, this is where things kind of, busted open, if you will, for me, and I started receiving messages, and I wasn't really sure how to harness that ability, and so where I learned some tips and tricks, if you will, to, uh, you know, control and and enhance those abilities, and um, and then I really did a year, if you will, like, uh, I just gave readings, Uh, didn't even charge for them, I did a whole year of, that's all I did, and I was very much being the soldier by day and being the medium by night. And, well, by the way, you know, I'm still juggling uh, family stuff. So in between, and next thing you know, I started getting, you start with friends and family, and uh, next thing you know, people are calling you, and I'm like, who is this? And, uh, oh, you don't know me, but I'm a friend of a friend of a friend. And um, it was a, a progression that San I thought I'd never say this, but I think, you know, we'll be doing this full time after I retire. And I've been retired for this May was five years. It was a five year anniversary of being retired from the military. And, uh, you know, it's certainly a humbling and rewarding experience every day. So I'm able to connect for clients and folks alike. Oh, wow. So, um, one of the things I know a lot of folks ask is, you know, um, in my military, I guess, time that I spent in the military or the time that I was overseas, because I know a lot of people have questions about saying, was there a traumatic event or was there something very traumatic that happened? And not that I'm aware of, um, you know, uh, but one of the things I do remember, and it's almost you know, looking back to hindsight as far as listening to my intuition, uh, when I was in Afghanistan, and this would have been a number of years ago, so like back in 2003, um, and you got to remember, we were, I was, I was in Afghanistan. I was in Afghanistan before the ground war in Iraq kicked off. Um, so the thing to understand is that, you know, in the early days, if you will, um, and uh, <laughs> One of the things I just read, looking hindsight is I was listening so much to my intuition, it wasn't even funny. Um, but at that time, it was, you know, I was writing because I kept a journal, is the only reason that I remember. And um, where I, re, you know, talking about going on patrol in certain areas and saying, hey, I got a bad feeling about this route or this area. And one, one story I like to share uh, usually is, uh, we were doing a night uh, mounted patrol in vehicles um, down a known uh, bad guy route, and uh, <laughs> and we we had stopped uh, the convoy and uh, the, the 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 patrol, and which is usually not uh, was not part of our uh, typical SOP, if you will, or routine, and. Um, and then people started getting out of the vehicle, and I was like, what the heck are you guys doing? You know? And I kept on hearing a voice uh, within me, and it was like, don't stop. Keep going. Get out of the area. This is not a good place to stop. Don't do it. 
And so I'm over the radio trying to get these guys back in the vehicle and, hey, we need to move. It's not time to, you know, uh, you know, pee break or whatever you guys are doing and uh, or a security halt. And uh, and I actually had to run up really quick and, and tell the lead vehicle, hey, you need to move it up a couple hundred meters. And uh, one of the things when I was up there, we still talk about it, um, is uh, where we heard an audible uh, click or sound. And, of course, we did uh, – we all kind of knew what it was. It was either – it was a, a – what we understand to be a, a, a the, the detonation uh, device of some type of explosive uh, material. And we were carrying with us um, – in those early days, there was a lot of prototype equipment by civilian contractors that was being fielded in country, and we were carrying with us a, a prototype piece of equipment um, that kind of puts a electronic bubble, if you will, around uh, vehicles and other things. And we still swear to this day, if that uh, if we didn't have that piece of equipment, we probably wouldn't be standing here. And uh, but one of the things I just think about is that, you know, kind of going back to hindsight again, is that inner voice that was telling me, hey, this is you, you need to move and saying, you know, I always think back and saying, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's always interesting to me because even when we don't call it intuition, it's always speaking to us. And so I, I just think that that piece is kind of fun to reflectful ability but so that's a little bit uh that's a little bit about i guess my military service and a snapshot and and kind of how i stepped into my mediumship abilities um and like i say i've been on <clears throat> my journey now for about eight years um you know and uh, i'm humbled each and every day that i'm able to uh to connect for folks and you know, and obviously, do I connect at a deeper level with the military and the families and military? Absolutely. Um, and, uh, you know, I always have and I always will. And uh, that's part of me. But at the same time, you know, I connect to everybody the same as well. Um, but, of course, there's always going to be a, a deeper part of me that connects a little bit differently to, to the military or, or those folks that, um, you know, kind of matching the background, so to speak. So, but, um, so, and that's kind of how the military medium was born. It was, uh, you know, it was just kind of a natural fit. And it's just like, that's, that's who I am. And uh, so, yeah. And now we're getting ready to uh, kick off what I'm calling the red, white, and you tour. Uh going to start off the first leg in the on the west coast up in the state of Washington and basically what it is is where I travel the back roads and main roads and everywhere in between and where I go to uh, home hosted uh, galleries you think of think of the Long Island medium standing in your living room and doing a gallery and um, the thing uh, and so basically the premise is, is individuals in a state or a given area uh, host me as far as putting on a, a private gallery or like a public gallery, but in a smaller setting. And what I'm trying to do is with mediumship being the vehicle um, is really helping, connecting people at a more intimate level, but helping more people heal and reaching them in a more intimate setting versus, hey, I'm going to the Coliseum tonight to watch psychic medium Dean McMurray. Um, so if that makes sense, and instead of, you know, two or 3,000 people showing up, you have, you know, anywhere from eight to eight to 20 folks in a, in a, in a you know, in a venue or whatever it is, wherever the host uh, picks. I've done, a, you know, I've done it on boats and decks and everywhere in between. I haven't done a hot air balloon yet, so that's interesting. Um, <laughs> <thing> is, <laughs> challenge accepted, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, right? Uh, but, um, you know, it's, it's wherever the host chooses to, to have it. I actually had somebody in Washington saying, hey, we have a restaurant, and it clears out at this time in a, you know, a small little seaside uh, uh, town. And 
And unfortunately, we already had all the, the venues or the, the, the shows booked. And I was like, hey, we certainly would have, uh, you know, included that as well. And then another fun thing that we're doing, um, we will be, uh, we're already going to be shooting episode three, <clears throat> but we're running a, um, a unscripted uh, Facebook Live um, series called Off the Radar with the Military Medium. And basically what it is, um, and you're probably seeing a lot of variances from a lot of different folks, not just mediums, but where it's where I give somebody a reading live uh, on Facebook, um, you know, Facebook Live, and, of course, get it uploaded to uh, YouTube and other venues, whatever. Um, but it's unscripted. It's uh, somebody that I don't know. Um, and I, obviously, I always prefer that I – never know any background or anything about the individual. Um, and, uh, and we did, uh, we, I like actually being able to do it face to face if possible. So the premise is, is wherever I go on these red, white new tours, um, is that a, we'll do an episode of off the radar with the military medium. And, uh, so episode three uh, will be around, I want to say, the 20th or 21st of um, July, and and that would be coming directly from uh, Bay Center, Washington. So right, hopefully we're going to be right on the beach. So <laughs> I'm kind of optimistic. So um, coming from North Dakota, we're kind of landlocked. So it's kind of exciting for me to, to be out on the ocean again. Um, but uh, so, yeah, that's a little bit of snippet about um, what's going on and what's, uh, I guess, about me, unless you guys had some specific questions or maybe some of the listeners had questions. Well, you made me think of a question because, uh, uh, you know, I kind of script my questions before show, but uh, <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, I've read a story about some troops that were in Afghanistan and uh, <clears throat> they were watching a village and then they noticed uh, a white object that was tracking them as they was trying to go back to their, I, I'm not, I don't know if I'm saying this or I'm not real good with the military lingo, but they were trying to go back, I think to their uh, main base, tracked them all night. So they decided not to go back to the main base because they couldn't figure out what it was because it was moving really quick and stopped. And then when day, this happened all night, and then by day, uh, daybreak, they noticed they didn't see the object anymore. And then they went back to the, close to the village and actually went into the village, and they couldn't find anyone there. Have you heard mm. any story about that or n know anything about that? I know it's I kind of haven't. I, I, I haven't, but I will tell you a story. Um, we were where I operated, um, I was. Um, in, a, in a province close to Pakistan. And uh, one of the areas that, you know, some of our would be a, 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 a cordon and search, meaning a military uh, term, meaning you're, you're surrounding the area with uh, people watching and uh, whether providing a security layer around it, a ring, um, and then, uh, you know, so you make sure that you ca uh, you're, you're searching everybody that comes in or goes out and then everybody, everything and everybody that's within this perimeter gets searched for whatever you're looking for, illegal arms or drugs or whatever. And one of the, we went in and this was a larger operation. And one of the things that, um, that I was tasked with, I, at the time I was a, uh, uh, when I was in Afghanistan, I was a infantry squad leader. And so I had uh, six men under my command. And uh, one of the things that was, it was uh, chopped up during that, uh, that operation. And we had, I was in charge of a, it was ba basically like we would um, kind of like we, I think we called it the runner team. And basically anybody that was out walking, we were supposed to go and detain them and find out where they're going. And then, you know, if they're just going out to check the garden or whatever, then whatever. But so it was interesting. We, um, 
So there was a, a, a male, uh, we got notification that there was a young male and a female walking with a donkey uh, down our area. And we had guys up in the mountains spotting for us. And, um, and so then we confirmed that. And uh, as they got closer, we told them in their native tongue in Pashtu that they need to stop and uh, prepare to be searched. And, um, and as soon as we said that, um, they took off. They started running. And uh, so, of course, we're trying to sprint. And back in those days, that was many years ago now, and I was much better shape than I am now. And, you know, you're completely loaded down with, uh, of course, full uh, body armor and, you know, all your am- ammunition and everything. And, uh, you know, of course, we're completely trying to dead out sprint um, these folks that are just wearing a uh, – you know, just their normal dress or whatever. And we got up to the area where the donkey was and where the last time we saw him, and they completely disappeared. So when you talk about disappearing, now I don't know about the white mist or I haven't heard that story. Um, But the thing that I do know is that they completely disappeared. And this was during the daytime. Um, And we even tried to run uh, thermals really don't work too well during the daytime because there's, all the interference, of course, but, um, you know, we tried to look for hidden areas and everything, and it was so odd. I remember thinking that. We were all like, they just vanished into thin air, and we were like, what the heck? And uh, there was no evidence of any hidden areas or whatever. And um, I was like, well, either two things. I was thinking either uh, their, uh, you know, their their masters, of dis- you know, there was a, Um, you know, a a secret hidden area uh, that was well camouflaged or uh, the other pieces is that I was like, you know, (laughs) that that, uh, something else, a higher power is going on here. But I have, after returning and stepping into mediumship and into, you know, the paranormal realm and learning more, I have heard And it always intrigues me because I never heard about these stories when I was in country because quite honestly, um, you know, I'm looking, you know, at that time again, like I was saying that I wasn't open to talking about psychics. I wasn't, you know, mediums and all that. Um, Even though, you know, and at that time you're concerned about not only yourself, but the guy to the left of you, the guy to the right of you, you know, front and back. And, you know, the guys that, you know, um, part of your team or squad or who, whatever makes up your unit and um, to do your job, get home safe, get back to your family or loved ones. And um, quite honestly, that was, that was the biggest focus. Um, and it was, it was almost in reflection to pick up a lot of different things um, going back. But I don't, I never journaled about anything funky, uh, if you will, like some interesting stories in a sense. And I, and I have talked to, I did a show a while back and they talked about, um, uh, the, uh, I think it's called the gin. Um, so talking about how it, uh, you know, more of an evil entity is, uh, there's a belief that a, a gin entity is, is rising in that area. And, uh, um, so, but it's, it's always interesting as, um, you know, different things that, that arise with that, but, um, you know, it wouldn't surprise me. There's a lot of areas. It's, it's very rugged in certain areas and, um, there's a, <laughs> there's a lot of, a lot of stuff that, um, uh, you know, that, that has gone left unexplored or unknown. So it's a, uh, it's a very ancient area as well. So uh, rich with history. So. Okay. Hello, Dean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hello. How are you? I'm good. Uh, my first good. question is, did you have any um, paranormal experiences, uh, you know, when you were younger? Um, you know, um, I did, and I, re- I took a lot of reflection, like, uh, cause I was doing research for a book and it's been a 
long <laughs> love hate relationship going on for a number of years now. And one of the things that I vividly remember, and I don't know why, but it must be for a reason, is the only paranormal um, uh, memory that I had. I, I remember probably being the age of six or seven. And I had a, uh, and I don't know if you know what a Formula One race car looks like, but oh, yeah. um, I had, okay, there you go. So I, I had a Formula One race car and toy car. It was a toy, obviously, at the age of <laughs> that age. And, uh, but, um, and, and I, for whatever reason, I love the thing. I just remember really liking it. And it broke. I think it was a wheel that broke or whatever, and the thing was completely broke off. And it was something that really, um, really bugged me. And um, I still remember this to this day that it was something that I was, it, I made a big, I, I wouldn't really say, I can't remember if I prayed or what I did at the time. But um, where I wanted the, the tire fixed, I wanted the car fixed like it was brand new. And, I, um, and in the morning when I woke up, the first thing I did was pick up the car. And I kid you not, that car was completely fixed. Now, no, a lot of people are going to say, Dean, that was probably your parents. They were like, got to feel bad for, you know, little Dean over here. He broke his favorite car. I'll get out the super glue. Yeah, I'm a parent too. I get it, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, but this, I but the thing that I remember is the wheel was completely. It was, it was fixed, and that's the thing that it was com- like it never broke type fix. And you know, you know when it's glued, um, and that's the thing that I remember even from that. Um, you know, well, you know, if I was if I was uh, in that age of you know, six, seven, eight, whatever, you know, do the math. I'm 48 now. So, <laughs> you know, that's, but something to stick with you that vividly, that, that just, to me, I guess that's what I would surmise as my only recollection of early sense of a paranormal or something that I couldn't explain. And that's the only thing that I remember. Um, but if that makes sense, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Not very next, profound, but. <laughs> um, my next question is, how were you able to fine tune your abilities to uh, start helping others? Okay. It's a great question. Um, so I, I want to talk about really quick before I fine tune it. So one of the things. Um, before I learned how to fine tune it was, it was, it was almost like I was drinking from a fire hydrant at times. And then um, if I was doing a reading, it was like, I couldn't, you know, talk fast enough or convey the message fast enough. And then it would dry up. And I was like really frustrated. I was like on again. off. And so uh, number one, um, I was told to read, Um, read as, as much and as often as I can. And I was actually told to start with a book um, uh, by John Edwards, uh, his book called, or one of his books called The Infinite Quest. And it's still, it, uh, I, I really liked his, I, I still actually, I recommend it to um, my students because I just love the way that he, John Edwards, writes his book and, uh, you know, how it set boundaries and, and different techniques about, you know, how to, um, whether it's with visualization or meditation or whatever. And then, um, and then I took a course from uh, a gentleman that um, used to live in my area and he since moved to the Twin Cities area. Um, and he was doing what he called a mediumship boot camp for like four weeks. And uh, where he, developed um, a series of, um, I'll just call them visualization techniques. So when you're, so if you've ever heard of mediums that start, and maybe there's somebody that's listening can, can, uh, you know, uh, recognize this when they're in that budding stages. 
for some mediums when they first start they'll they'll start uh, getting information then all of a sudden it's like ramming into a brick wall and then it just stops the information stops flowing and it's like what the heck and instead of completely stopping the reading there's other techniques to kind of um, pull out a little bit or away from the reading and enter it in a different way. And it's through different visualization techniques. And really what I've come to come to find out is it's the same information, but it's a way to get out of your head and come back into that, um, that, you know, that, that conscious or that, 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 that status that, that is, you know, allows you to reconnect. And, um, you know, now it just comes very, so much more naturally for me. And over the years, you just learn to work with it. But, um, you know, not only, so I've learned to develop it and refine it through a tremendous amount of reading, um, you know, all different types of books, whether it's from James Van Prague to John Edwards to Alison Dubois, anything and everything, uh, I consume, you know, that interests me at the time. I consumed it. Um, and then uh, the other pieces is that um, I went and had readings. Um, so I kind of watched how other people did it. Um, and then if you don't, if you don't know, you know, if you don't have a technique, it's like, how do I even, you know, it's like your dad teaching you how to change a tire, right? And you're going to copy his technique till you figure out your own. And that's kind of how it was in the beginning. And then it's just like, oh, well, this is easy. You know, it's like, you know, I knew how to, I should have known how to do it all along. It was all, always right there. And so that's basically what it was. It was just um, being shown a way how to do something and then tell you figure out your own way to do it and refine it and then uh, go from there and, you know, and the biggest thing that I would share is time, time and practice. You know, they, they don't um, usually refer to intuition as a muscle, and it won't grow unless you exercise it. You know, it's like taking one exercise class and then sitting at home and, <laughs> and going on a diet of Oreos, right? So it's not going to do any good. Um, but if we want to maintain a healthy lifestyle or, or our body to continually get healthy, we must continually exercise it, right? And that's the same with intuition and the the psychic ability and the mediumship. You know, all of that was to continually practice and re- refine and refine. And, and that's really all I did for that full year. And even today, and I got to share, a lot of people think, oh, when you start doing it professionally or full time, uh, then you're done practicing. Well, in my humble opinion, I don't believe that we're ever done learning. Um, I would hope not anyways. And every day I'm taught something new and, and I learn something new. And, you know, I think every one of us is a, is a teacher to each other. And so I'm always refining and learning new things each time um, I give a reading. There's always something interesting. It's like, oh, that's interesting how they show up or maybe show me something new and saying, oh, that's kind of neat, you know. Um, so it's it's always interesting. So I don't think it's really a, you know, it's like, oh, I went to high school, that's it, or I went to college, I got a degree, that's it. It's like it's ongoing education all the time, but it's always being refined and, and enhanced. But that's kind of my journey of how I learned. Does that answer your question? Yep, sure it is. <laughs> okay, <laughs> beautiful. Um, now, is there a difference between a psychic and a medium? Great question. So, um, so people are going to tell you that uh, a psychic is not a medium and a medium is a psychic. And because when it comes to labels, you know, the medium obviously with, with uh, the late or with the definition of each label comes obviously that the medium just being able to communicate both ways to receive and transmit to spirits. And then the, the psychic to connect to the energy of the individual 
not a spirit per se. Here's my deal. Uh, What I always share is that it's a very tricky um, road when you start using labels because I have met in, you know, and just really in my short time of doing this, but it seems like a long time of doing this is that I have met a tremendous amount of psychics that are very gifted mediums, but they don't use the label medium. And I have met some beautiful, you know, very gifted uh, mediums that don't use whatever label. And so the thing that I would caution folks is, you know, sure. Somebody provides a certain, so if you see, uh, You know, if I just said psychic Dean McMurray and saying, oh, you're not a medium, you know, but saying instead of saying that, saying, do you do mediumship work? Because, you know, there's so many other, you know, gifts that people have out there, you know, whether it's healing work or other things and saying, ask them if they provide that. So I would I would share is that. is a it you know is there the difference between the psychics and the mediums by definition yes traditionally by definition a psychic is not a medium and but a medium is a psychic um but um but i always like boy it kind of gets in that strange funky land of of labels and <laughs> and i'm like oh, i try to stay away from them but we all know that we have to embrace them so people know what we do and so does that make sense oh yeah I agree. yeah okay <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, have you ever not been able to read someone have i never been able to read someone uh, there was one time Um, there was one time that there was a, I was at a women's expo and there was this lady that, um, it wasn't the greatest venue to be at because there was a lot of, uh, uh, you know, it's one thing to be skeptical. It's another to be very cynical. And, uh, there was a lot of people that were in this cynical range and, um, but, and, but what I share is one of these ladies came up and I was talking to her about, you know, what, what's this all about? And, uh, the, you know, some, uh, misunderstood truths and, you know, uh, fact or fiction about psychics and mediums and, you know, cause there was a lot, and she said, well, could you, uh, could you read me? And I said, well, absolutely. I could give you a reading. And, uh, so the, and obviously we were, you know, there was a fee for readings and, um, she pays her fee and I proceed to start giving her a reading and the lady, um, already had went, had come there with a preconceived notion of number one, who was going to step forward, number two, how the reading was going to work. Um, and so really I was already sunk before, um, you know, uh, things started because a lot of people don't understand that there's no guarantee that the person that you are hoping that step forward is going to step forward. Um, and saying just because you have a perception of how the reading will go or work, not every medium or not every psychic does readings the same way. You know, I always say as a medium is a medium is a medium. We all do the same thing, but we all do it differently. And it doesn't mean that it's bad. It just means that, hey, we're just all unique, just like everybody else. And um, the thing that um, uh, she she completely was in a space of, um, you know, I I took, uh, as I always do in my readings, I always ask, is that something that you can recognize or validate? after I brought through very specific information and um, yeah, of this individual or individuals I should share. And she quite honestly, uh, very, very sharply said, no, I cannot. 
And I said, you know what? To be reading you. And because, number one, I could feel her, um, that she wasn't open anyways. And number two, um, I was like, even if I delivered her a message, she wouldn't be in a space to receive it. So I very happily refunded her her money and said, you know, if you would like a reading from one of these other uh, readers, uh, you're more than welcome. But I think she actually left. I, <laughs> I, I, I don't think uh, it was really her. <laughs> cup of tea it was a um it wasn't a psychic expo so to speak but uh um but uh so yeah but uh so does it happen sometimes it's happened like once in the in the eight years that i've done it the thing that i have found is that we all have a message um there's always a message there um you know um it's just whether or not we're ready to listen to it um and whether or not we're open hearing it so well when you're doing these readings or do you see any people that have passed on that maybe their family members or someone else that may be close to them now so uh maybe i don't understand your question so um if i'm doing a reading um you know for example, Rod, if I was giving you a reading, the, the premise would be is to connect to spirits that are stepping forward to communicate with you. Um, and whether they're friends, family, um, you know, sibling, wh- whomever. And so do I, do I see them uh, in my mind's eye? I do. There's usually, uh, I, I usually share like 99% of the time it's all in my mind's eye. Um, and then there's a 1%, uh, you know, where I'll see a physical manifestation or something outside of me, um, you know, with that. But that is the premise of connecting to their uh, loved ones, angels, guides, anybody that has a divine message to share with them um, for their highest good is, is the premise of, of uh, and, you know, I always like sharing is that, you know, helping Others heal at a bigger level, one connection at a time. That is, that is my ultimate big vision goal. Um, okay. So, yeah. Well, can anyone be a psychic medium? You know, I. That's a great question. Uh, it's my. Some will tell you no. Some believe that it is, um, you know, in the family or. You know, you got to be a certain bloodline or this, that, the other thing. It's my belief is this, is that we're all mediums, we're all psychics, we're all healers. We're all, you know, we, we're we all connected. We're all part of the, the oneness, if you will. Um, and But it's just whether or not you choose to, number one, step into that ability um, and number two, a lot of people, you know, would say, well, Dean, that might come very naturally for you, maybe even later in life. But saying for me, I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not even aware of being a psychic. And here's the thing that I would share is I'm going to use an analogy of tennis. And because I don't even play tennis, I, I really suck at tennis. I don't, I don't even like watching tennis, nothing against tennis players, but that's why I'm using the analogy is if I wanted to be a pro tennis player like Andre Agassi, right, and I wanted to be or like, you know, maybe like Serena Williams or somebody that's very professional, right, that level, and saying, could I be, could I perform and play tennis at that level? And the answer is very simply why, yes, you could. And saying, even if I naturally, maybe I'm very clumsy and not, you know, feels, you know, uh, be better off to taping the racket to my forehead sometimes, you're right. But the thing is, is that true, if I trained hard enough and I practiced hard enough, could I get to that level? Absolutely. If I wanted it bad enough, I certainly could learn how to play tennis. I believe there's an innate ability within us all to remember, not to learn, we're really to remember those abilities that already lie dormant there. The other piece that I would share is that for some of us, um, 
some of these abilities lie closer to the surface than others. So um, using the tennis analogy again, maybe Andre, and I don't know his background, um, or even Serena Williams, but saying, you know, for those folks, maybe, you know, when they were maybe three, four years old or whatever, maybe it was very natural for them to pick up the tennis racket and, and just like they started playing like they were born with a racket in their hand. Um, but for me, not so much, but maybe mediumship just came very natural. So those, there are certain abilities that lie closer to the surface for others. Um, like some are very gifted healers. Um, you hear some very miraculous stories, and I know some people that are um, extremely beautiful, gifted healers, and it's like, wow, you know, um, you have a very natural gift in that area. But that doesn't, one thing doesn't define them. There's so much more than a healer, so much more than a medium. But um, does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Okay, so... And that's my belief, um, you know, that we can, we're all these things, but it's um, what direction do you want to go? You know, a lot of people say, too, I hear the the argument saying, Dean, you know, I haven't had an awakening. I haven't had any inkling, but I want to develop, you know, my psychic abilities, my intuition, my whatever it is, right? And saying, you know, and then I always share saying, well, then do it. Um, You know, start enhancing your intuition. Start doing exercises that, you know, expand your intuitive awareness. And and the thing that I would share is there is no red-green pill. There is no pill to take. Um, Nine times out of ten, it is no flash, boom, bang. Um, Sometimes maybe, but, you know, it's usually uh, whispers and, you know, really, it's it's sometimes it's kind of boring. <laughs> I hate to take the excitement away from it, but really, you should uh, somebody should be asking themselves why they want to do it because once you start down the road, you can't unknow stuff and you can't undo stuff. Not I'm not trying to you know put like big doom and gloom because there's none of that. But the thing I would share is that it's um, it's a lot of development. It's like um, you know, if I was to tell, you know, if I was an Olympic athlete, which I'm clearly not, but <laughs> I would say, why do you want to be an Olympic athlete? Do you know that it is hours and you have to dedicate yourself and you have to want it more than anything and you have to, you know, all this time and, and saying, but if that's what somebody really wants, then, um, and the other thing is a lot of people saying, well, Dean, you didn't want it, but it just awakened for you. Can I answer why? Uh, it's just because all I know is that my grandmother, that one particular evening, for whatever reason, I was supposed to step into my abilities that were already there, but were lying dormant, if you will. Um, and um, I was supposed to step into them because I was already, you know, getting getting into my 40s. And I think my grandmother was saying, hey, you need to get your ass going because you need to figure out what you're doing with mediumship so down the road you can really make a bigger impact in people's lives and help more people. And that's really what it's about. So, um, you know, does that make sense? Oh, yeah. I love Grandma. Oh, Grandma. Yeah, they can't make you cookie, but... Right. She'll, yeah, she'll make you pie, but kick her eight in the ass at the same time. So you got <laughs> yeah. to love her. Yeah. Do so. you believe that criminals will one day be prosecuted based on information given by psychics or mediums? Well, here's, here's what uh, I do. Um, and <laughs> Uh, but here's also there's a caveat to that is it depends what level uh, of information is being given because psychics are only, we're, we're, you know, psychics or mediums are only a vessel, right? And so regardless of whatever information is being given or their interpretation of that information, 
So understand that we're all human, right? And they're, and so all they can do is understand their best of the – because the information they're being given is not wrong. Their interpretation may be off. And saying, so it may take a while or – um, or sometimes um, there has been cases that psychics and, and other mediums have have uh, weighed in on, um, and certainly they, they haven't found any result to it. Um, and um, you know, but you know, the thing is, is do, do I believe in? Because I actually used to work for or well, shouldn't say work. I used to uh, I used to volunteer with the organization, a great nonprofit organization called Find Me. Uh, Find Me is a nonprofit organization that works with mediums, uh, psychics, dowsers, uh, all kinds of folks all over the world, right? And mm-hmm. uh, they're based they're, they're I think they're based out of Arizona, if I'm not uh, mistaken. And basically, they work with uh, missing person cases and homicide investigations. And uh, I know they also work with, you know, of course, they work directly with law enforcement and uh, AB. Is it ABSTAR? NABSTAR? It's a search and rescue organization in um, Arizona, I believe. Anyways, um, you know, and the thing is, is that – you know, organizations such as that and even the that are working independently and, you know, um, it takes a tremendous um, – and if anybody out there has listening or maybe some of you guys as well have ever worked, um, have done some of that work, how tremendously uh, heavy the work certainly is. And not energetically, but obviously emotionally. Um and it takes a lot of, of energy because you're putting so much into whether you're doing however the individual is doing the investigating on their end, whether it's remote viewing, uh, maybe they're doing pendulum work, um, whether they're doing, you know, maybe they're connecting to the deceased um, individual trying to get information because um, it, it Sometimes it can be a bit like detective work because um, sometimes the the victim themselves maybe didn't really see a lot of where they are, so they're only maybe they're seeing from a first you know that point of view from the victim themselves. Maybe they were always blindfolded, or so they can only get you know I'm by the water, or you know whatever the case is, and and um, it, it, it can be. It can be a challenge sometimes, and um, but do I believe I, you know, um, it, it would sound pretty bleak if I said no. Uh, do I believe that um, you know psychics and mediums can greatly enhance and and uh, you know police and and other uh, organizations' uh, efforts? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I believe that within my bones. Uh, not only just being a medium myself, but um, you know, just knowing some cases that other folks have worked on and, and other things. So I just, hey, why not? If you can have, uh, you know, uh, extra leads or whatever into your case. And obviously I'm not a police officer, never have men or detective. Um, so, and I'm sure their job is difficult enough, but, um, you know, I would uh, I would think that, as we would say in the military, that's a force multiplier. So the more mm-hmm. uh, the more assets you can have, um, especially even if. But I know a lot of a lot of police. I know there's folks out there. There's some great psychic mediums that are doing some tremendous work out there. Uh, some that are even across the border into Canada. Um, you know, some of our partners uh, outside the United States and within um, doing some tremendous work that are being recognized by law enforcement and other agencies. Um, I think that's tremendous because not only they're bridging the gap, um, but they're doing, you know, tremendous work at the same time. So I really applaud them for the work and because it takes a tremendous, it's a lot of energy to do that. And it's, and it's exhausting and a lot of people get burnt out doing it. And uh, so I wish them a lot of luck 
you know, if they continue doing it. I got a question to add to this. Uh, have, have you ever been watching the news about a crime or a case and known the information that, you know, that could break the case? Uh, you know, would you call the authorities or have you called the authorities or have you ever worked um, anything like that? Sure, sure, sure. Um, we had a local, um, we had a local thing where, uh, it was a local case where we had, a the name was a Savannah gray wind, um, native American young lady, um, where, uh, she basically, what it was is she was murdered. She was pregnant and she was about, you know, she was close to give birth. And basically the lady or the, the lady, uh, I don't know if it all came up. The, I think the lady killed her and cut the baby. I was really gruesome anyways, because she wanted the baby for hers. It was really crazy. And, but they couldn't find the body is what the crazy thing is. And they were looking, looking, looking for the body and it was taking quite a bit of time. And um, one of the things, there's, there was actually several of us um, mediums in, from my region that um, called in. But one of the things, yes, did I call the tip line? Um, absolutely. Um, I certainly did. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, you know, so. And the nice thing is, is that, uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, Savannah uh, Gray one was found. Um, the, the bot or the um, you know unfortunate piece obviously she was she was killed but the thing is is that the family was that was able to have closure with the with her remains and um, the baby uh, I just want to add to the story the baby is very safe um, and um, as far as I know is 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 doing fine that's been over a year now um, so very interesting so to answer your question. Does it happen sometimes? Yes. Um, if it happened again, uh, what I call like a tip line or whatever, absolutely. Uh, and I did in that instance, uh, anything that I had relating to that case, um, you know. And then the other piece is, is that sometimes I get stuff that I have no clue um, what it's pertaining to um, until like after the fact because, um, you know, if you go back to, uh, you know, I think the tsunami that hit, uh, was it the Philippines or Taiwan or whatever around Christmas that one year? Um, and actually, um, uh, I, prior to that, uh, was about a month prior to that is where I received something in, uh, I was doing daily, what I call like daily journaling, and if you will, and kind of like channeling, channeling some information just from spirits and whatever, and uh, any guidance for me or my family. And sometimes it was just like a random, every once in a while, it would be like a random odd thing. And after I got done the session, I would look at it and go, well, and I would literally say, what the hell does that mean? And, you know, it was something very profound or weird and I was like well that doesn't make any sense and so sometimes I you know I think to like natural disasters and of course I'm thinking there's this path or you know and I don't have tv I try to stay away from all that stuff and so I'm like huh and so of course I'm googling if there's any natural disasters that happen that day or anything and saying, and it was very quiet and saying, so I was like, well, I'll just put this piece of paper in my binder. And it was very interesting because um, not long after um, there, it, uh, they had the tsunami and I was like, quite literally said, holy shit. And I ran downstairs and got my binder and I pulled it out and I showed my wife, I said, check this out and I said I took this information I don't know whenever and I said and it was really frustrating because I, I kind of actually had said if you're going to give me this information uh, why don't you give me a way to you know
you know, what I'm supposed to do with it because otherwise it's really kind of frustrating saying, you know, if there's going to be something or something's going to happen, saying, is that just for me to watch? And saying that's really kind of frustrating and very kind of, uh, uh, you know, grim, you know, to think about and saying, um, so I said, I don't want to know about it if I, if you're not going to give me a way to, to help people with it. And so, um, so, and, and it was quite literally my, <laughs> my discussion with the voices in my head, I call it, um, you know, it's, uh, it's always kind of interesting. Um, but, you know, knowing about things beforehand, um, is a, cha- you know, is a challenge sometimes, but it's interesting because, one story I will share with you is, um, and I wish I had my, I'm in another part of my house, is um, in my journal, and this was well, I think um, now President Trump had just announced he was running for president um, or for candidacy, I believe. And um, I had channeled information that something about the uh, so you remember the whole uh, the whole drama and the scandal about uh, collusion and of course about uh, about how uh, Russia was involved in all this crazy stuff and before any of that even came on the radar um, Spirit was talking about to me about how Russia will be involved in a major way with the election. And uh, I was like, now that is crazy stuff to me. I was like, now that was, and that was one of those things that'll just kind of sit, um, you know, just kind of, okay, well, we'll see if I was right, you know. <laughs> and sometimes, because, you know, you're not really sure, I'm, am I hearing that correctly? I'll just put it in the in the binder. And, um, and then sometimes it's like, and, and, you know, down the road, like six months or whatever it is, a year I'll go back and look at it and say, huh, like what I wrote there. And I was like, isn't that interesting? A lot of times I don't like being right because usually for me that means something is not good and usually it involves, obviously I talk to spirits, so it usually involves somebody's life, you know, losing life or, you know, something and it's not always roses. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's, you know, uh, you get, um, foreshadowing of great things. So, you know, uh, premonitions or precognitions of, of tremendous things happening. Um, you know, whether it's raises or marriage or babies or, you know, um, different things like that. So, you know, I'm, it's always kind of honor when I'm able to tell, uh, especially a lady, um, that she's going to have a baby girl. And then she looks at me very serious and says, Dean, you're crazy. The doctor says there's no way medically that I'm al- that I can have the baby and saying, well, I'm just telling you what I'm getting. And a year later, she contacts you and said, holy shit, you'll never guess. And it just, you know, and where it comes and where in this very story, where this lady, um, where that's where I told her that she was going to have a girl a full year later, she had a baby girl and she was like the craziest thing. And I said, well, that just gives me goosebumps. I said, that is, I said, that's the kind of stuff I want to hear. <laughs> I said, you know, it's like, you know, so many times it's, I'm always connecting, you know, I'm always working with people that are in a grief space or, and not that I, you know, I just, it's not that I don't enjoy helping people in that space or different places, but it's so refreshing to be able to be the bearer of um, different news, I guess, would be a great word. And something that is, would be considered, I would consider it a miracle if the doctors tell you that there's no way medically that you can have a baby because your body just is not developed to carry a child to term. Um, And then, you know, the universe is like, no, you're going to have a kid and it's going to be a girl. And, and then they have a baby. It's like, Oh my God, that's, 
That is the coolest thing ever. I mean, you know. Oh, yeah. You're like, I got that yeah, one right. Yeah, that <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. right? It was kind of fun because she actually, um, I was doing, uh, it's, um, I was actually doing a, a, a gallery in the city that, uh, that she lives. And she, uh, it was her and her mom and her sisters came to the gallery and she brought her daughter, uh, which was just a newborn at the time. And uh, she's like, I just want to introduce you to my daughter um, that, uh, you know, and I was like, wow. And I said, just tell me you did not name her Dean. Please <laughs> tell me. She she said, no, I named her Hope. But <laughs> And I said, well, thank God. <laughs> and I said, that's awesome. I said, that's, I said, that's cool. Thank you. And I said, that's just a really honor to be able. And those are the things that really touch me and give me big goosebumps. I mean, there's so many more, but I mean, you know, it's, um, you know, just being part of that, the bigger picture for folks and just being a small part of their lives is, um, is a, is a huge honor. So. Oh yeah. I'm there. Yeah. Well, you, you kind of touched on this a little bit, but. Uh, some some psychics give predictions and some don't. You know, how do you mm-hmm. feel about predictions? And do you do do you give uh, 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 predictions or not? I do. Um, and here's and I and it's a little conflicting for me because people are going to ask for them, and, and and there's a lot of people that really want them. Hey, what do you see around? Of course, the the biggest things: love, money, relationships. Three biggies, right? Everybody wants to know about love and money, um, you know, and, and jobs, sorry, jobs. So love, money, and jobs and relationships. So I guess four. But um, so what I would share is a few things. Predictions are this, is um, the any time, and I don't care who they are, um, when they're when somebody is giving you a prediction, they are reading the energy around the given situation at the time, and saying because nothing is set in stone. I, I'm a complete believer in this: is that the future is always in flux, meaning what you do or don't do in the given moment is always rewriting the future. So if I was, you know, I use the analogy of your example of if I was to run down right now and rob the 7-Eleven, which I'm not going to do, that would affect my future outcome. And so, um, but the thing is, it's just like, you know, if I, um, you know, somebody chooses to get married or not or have kids or not, that's affecting their, obviously, uh, their future outcome. Um, So the thing is, is even if a psychic tells them, oh, uh, you know, I see, you know, I see you having, getting married and having four kids and, you know, living in the state of Maine or whatever, right? And because there's, you know, some that will let folks know that or whatever. And so here's the deal is that if I say, you know what, the hell with that, I never want to get married and I want to stay in Iowa or wherever you're from. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to get married. I'm going to stay single. I'm going to stay in, uh, you know, the, the Midwest or whatever. And, um, you know, and I'm going to take charge of my destiny. And that's the biggest thing to let folks know is that you are in charge of your destiny. And the psychics are not telling you that it's set in stone, but they're, but they're basically, it's just that. They're, they're giving you a prediction of what the, it's not like a weather forecaster, right? It's like they're looking at weather models, and, of course, they're using science and technology to try to predict or forecast what the weather will be like. Some are better than others, obviously. Um, you know, it's like saying, well, it might rain today and it might not, right? But the thing is, if a psychic is any good, um, they are going to read the energy around whatever it is. Because I get one, I get a lot is, um, and especially with today's economy, um, am I going to get that next job or whatever? You know, there's a lot of strife with jobs or unemployment or whatever's going on. And um, 
it's like, and so I, one of the things I struggle with a little bit is really giving somebody predictions because here's the reason I struggle with it is if I tell you something, you know, Dean's prediction on how this is going to turn out, you might lock that in and say, Oh, I'm screwed. You know, Dean just told me that um, it's not looking good. Oh, I might as well move. I might as well go back to college and get another degree. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, it's like, you know, things can completely shift. Could you get that job? Absolutely. But the thing is, is understanding is try to stay open to the potential or possibilities of. So regardless, and that's why a lot of times you'll see a lot of folks or a lot of psychics where they'll say, hey, they always throw out the legal disclaimer saying a reading is, um, you know, for entertainment purposes, even though technically I really hate saying it's for entertainment uh, because I believe, you know, I was like, uh, is it, does it provide entertainment to folks? Maybe at a level, but it's so much more than that. Um, the thing that I would share is that, uh, you know, even the best psychic can only read the energy around whatever given event or possibility of event at, at the given time. And if, and it's just like anything else. It's like the weather. If you don't like it, wait five minutes. Oops. His call dropped. <laughs> it felt like we was losing. Uh, hang on a second. We'll get him back. Uh, let me send him a message. Uh, Dean, we lost you. If you can hear me, uh, call back in. Let's see, your call drop. <laughs> and you call back in, <laughs> It happens. It happened last week. It happened this week. We get up. Oh, he's back. Well, he called back in quick. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, I heard the beep, and I was like, oh, but, but I was, uh, I think it was mid sentence talking about right when I was talking about why the the reason correct me if I'm wrong um why I just like um not giving predictions uh, the part of it because you know folks would they just put it in concrete right saying oh you know it's it's not in the cards for me right and mm-hmm. But the thing that I would share is just understanding that we are in control of our destiny and it depends how bad you want it. So, but you can change at the last minute too, because we're given freedom, freedom of choice. So I guess long story short is um, people will still ask for predictions saying, what do you get around this? Or what do you get around this? And I actually do it. uh, It's interesting is I do, I do a lot of, I call it psychic intuitive work for corporations or business intuitive work. And I have clients that are Fortune 500 business owners. I have a grandma that's also a, a massage therapist. I got, a, uh, I got a, another gal that's um, a realtor. Um, so when they ask me, you know, what's the – you know, what do you feel around this? Or, you know, is this person in alignment with my company? Or what do you think about this investment? Um, I All I'm doing, and they know this, my clients know this, is that all I'm doing is matching the energy of where they want to go or what the, the outcome that they want to what's currently going on. And... Um, so, yeah. So that's you know, and so and then it's interesting. <laughs> I didn't mean to laugh. Does that make sense? You're like, oh yeah, 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 it makes sense. But the way you're like, uh, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like, oh, it was like yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, Dean, I have a question. Um, would would you do a reading on me? 
And I got to ask, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your first name when we started. Well, my name is Melinda, but everybody calls me Raven. Okay. Okay. Do I have to give you a okay. specific? No. Um, so just give me a sec. So a few things, Raven, for you. Um, okay, yeah. So um, real quick, so one of the things that a lot of folks um, during my readings, regardless if somebody's a real, religious affiliation or non-religious affiliation, is during my readings I'll ask archangels to step into everyone's reading, um, regardless of whether you believe in them or not um, or connect with them or not. Um, and as they share information about you to me uh, to convey to you. So one of the first things, Raven, is we got Archangel Michael and we, uh, that steps in above you, and that's usually where I ask angels to guys step in. Archangel Michael, very prominent for you, just a tremendous amount of protection, but one of the things that he talks about is protecting more your back and feel more in the shoulder blade area. And we're going to talk about Archangel Raphael with that, but I just feel that, and I don't know why, but I don't know if you had trauma or injury or tend to have problems with your shoulder blade or back area right in there, but it's interesting just the way that the energy is carried. But one of the things he can, he, uh, the way that he comes in and protects you, it's almost like uh, protecting you more in a traveling mode. So it feels to me more like, I don't know if you um, uh, had a very profound um, uh, experience or, or auto, uh, automobile accident, but it feels like something where it was very profound protection um, and it's very, uh, very big in that sense. The other thing is I want to talk about Archangel Raphael, and we understand Raphael works with healers of all modalities and is also associated with the color green. And that comes in, of course, we talked about the, the area of the back and around the shoulder blades because I also felt the energy of Archangel Raphael in there. But I, uh, predominantly also, Raven, I want to talk about Raphael talking about working with you. Um, and it's interesting because um, it actually doesn't feel that very long. Now we're not talking 20 years or something, but we're talking about your innate. And remember I was saying we're all healers, we're all psychics, all that folk all that stuff, but also the healer aspect and it feels so I don't know if you've been working in or used to work in a healing modality or maybe even um, in the healthcare industry. But one of the things is, is just talking about how the energy is, is um, aligning with you. And the other thing I want to talk about Archangel Gabriel and it steps our Gabriel steps closest to your head and it's almost enveloping, if you will, um, uh, very interesting because Gabriel almost makes like a, I don't want to call it a helmet or a, ha a halo or anything, but in a sense, it's the way that uh, Gabriel's energy kind of drapes over your head. So I'm understanding a lot of abilities as far as, because we understand Gabriel is the messenger and talking about not only, you know, it would fit right in, obviously, uh, you know, doing uh the hosting gig for the, the radio show so you have a message to convey, but also on the psychic realm, talking about the ability to not only hear but also um, see occasionally. And then also I'm feeling something with tasting. So I don't know if you get, which is known as Claire Gustins, and I don't know if you get, excuse me, some of that from time to time, whether you can really taste like sweet things, maybe like bubble gum or other things, um, and then uh, – so, and then the other thing, obviously, is this very much the empathic part of the ability to feel um, other people's energy, and um, which can also always be a, a double-edged sword. Does that piece make sense to you? Does the, um, does the back issues, have you been having back issues or in the shoulder blade region? Um, yes, I had a car wreck that actually threw me through a windshield. Okay. Wow. Okay. So that tremendously makes, um, and are you aware of your healing ability? I mean, not only about yourself healing, of course I get that, but also about your innate healing abilities about being a healer yourself. Does that make sense? I, I have, I actually have gifts that, that have been passed down. I'm native American from my mom's side of the family. 
Oh, wow. Okay. Very cool. And then, um, so very cool. So just tremendous validation. And uh, can I ask, during your car accident, so when we talk about this very profound, um, you know, interaction, <laughs> did, you, did you have what I would call like a, do you remember anything about like feeling protected or seeing anything? Um, Actually, was yes. Just- yes, I, uh, the, the paramedic found me in the middle of the highway because I wasn't driving. I was a passenger and I did not have my seatbelt on and she fell asleep at the wheel and the motor actually pinned her in, but it threw me out of it. And there was cars wow. and by, but I, I, I was never touched by any of the cars. Wow. That is crazy. And to me, that's just beautiful validation. That, and that's just from the angels. So we're going to jump down now to, to talk about some spirit uh, message for you um, for a few things, okay? Okay. So, um, so first and foremost, um, uh, I do have a male that steps forward on the mom, or sorry, on the father's side of the family. Understand that this gentleman would have passed, and I'm feeling like he was in his mid to late 70s. I see him as a tall taller, thin gentleman, a little bit of a belly to him. Not, he was, uh, for the most part, he was fairly thin. For um, One of the things, though, I smell with this gentleman is, um, and it feels like um, uh, uh, this would have been back maybe in his younger day, um, was, uh, if I'm understanding, is, is in his words, it's a rye. So it would be more of a whiskey, but he's talking about a rye, like a rye whiskey. It's like a I'm really even not familiar with like a rye whiskey, but it's like a very raw or almost maybe a home brewed style whiskey. Um, it's, I would call it rock gut is actually what I would call it. Cause it, it I just really, it's kind of nasty smelling. Um, so I'm understanding that he liked his drink and this would have been um, uh, when he was quite younger. Um, one of the things though that I do get with him is, um, is that he, uh, makes mention of actually passing from cancer. It actually feels like he would have passed in the, it would have been either late summer, early fall. It feels like right in that transition time frame, um, like one of those really beautiful uh, early fall days, if you will, where it's still kind of, you know, colors start changing, but yet, um, uh, you know, it's still kind of nice and warm, all that kind of stuff. And that's the weather that I'm feeling. Um, And then I also want to jump over on the mom's side of the family. I do have a female that does step forward, understand that she would have passed, if I'm understanding correct, would have been in her mid-60s. I see her as a shorter, heavier set lady. I see her with glasses and darker, curly hair kind of grain. Um, And one of the things is that she is very, how do I want to say, very opinionated, but at the same time, very loving at the same time. same time um one of the things that she makes mention of is that um is that she talks about either um either it's working it feels more like she worked in like a cafe um or cafeteria style because it feels like there was she would serve one another or like person after person so it was um what it almost feels like to me is like where she worked in a school like a school style cafeteria it could have been in a different place, but it just feels like one after another, after another where she served them. Um, so one of the things that, that she would have done, um, and, uh, it was somebody that she really touched a lot of lives. So, it's, um, so I don't know if, you know, in her capacity, maybe working in this place that, that she t- touched a lot of young people or they really connected to her or whatever the thing is. Um, but uh, very interesting. Um, th- and let me take a brief pause and ask you if that's um, with the male and the female, is that somebody that you can recognize or validate? No, no, neither one of those. Okay. Uh, at first okay. you started talking and, about cooking, I thought it was somebody else. <laughs> okay. And, but thing that I want to, I also want to recognize and validate Raven, uh, also a um, – a female that kind of steps behind you at, at an angle. And the thing that uh, typically that denotes um, a non-blood relative. So when we're talking about 
It could be like a, you know, a cousin, could be a, a friend from high school, college, whatever. Um, and it feels rather young. To, uh, she feels rather young to me. Um, and one of the things um, uh, that uh, that she talks about. Let me just. I'm I'm just really listening here. <sighs> So uh, she holds up a beanie baby. It's very specific. She holds it up, um, and it is a – it's an elephant. Um, and I don't know why it's specific. Um, and there, it looks to me like an elephant. And she just a really one of the things with her personality. It's just uh, a really fun, uh, fun loving individual. Uh, kind of a, a crazy, <laughs> kind of one of those crazy uh, personalities or whatever. But just a really sweet at the same time. Um, but does the beanie baby make or the elephant beanie baby make any sense to you? Um, yeah, um, I had a friend, and she used to collect them. And she was oh, she wow. was murdered. Oh wow! Wow. Okay. All right. Wow. And was it now? Was she like a high school friend or just a? No, it was it was later on in my early adult. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Was she about? Um, if I'm understanding correctly, was she about her mid twenties, mid mid to late twenties when she would have passed? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, going into her message um, is for you is um, she laughs. She's laughing. And now I got to ask you. Um, you asked me earlier this evening about. It's interesting that she comes up. Because you asked me earlier this evening if I believe or believed that, um, you know, uh, if cases that, you know, psychic mediums work on, um, if they'll get solved. Um, and was this one such case? That was solved, yes. It's interesting because it, it was it, uh, it very interesting. Um, but one of the things that just understanding is that it's, it's just a very profound um, and uh, she's just kind of a really interesting individual. But one of the things, and I know you know this, uh, Raven, but she really just wants to know, you to know, obviously, how much uh, – she loves you, uh, first and foremost. And then um, just really, uh, she really talks about just uh, how much transformation that you're really in. So um, there is a lot of change going on behind um, the, uh, the scenes for you. Does that make sense? Yes, very much thing is she's saying that just really let you know that um, she's with you at every step and understand that uh, if you need that if you need the support she's there so um, so the other thing though that she talks about some legal stuff coming up as well um, and I don't really know what that's all about, but the thing is, is that there's still, I don't know, it still kind of feels like there's some stuff up in the air going on, um, some decisions being made uh, as far as before really anything could either, you know, remember we talked about predictions or, and sometimes spirit will, will share a little bit, but to understand you, but sometimes, when it comes to legal stuff, if there's a decision or trying to make a, a judgment in a case or something, 
Um, sometimes we know the outcome prior to the actual follow-up trial or whatever the case or the hearing. And so understand with that is that it feels like it's still, there's still something going on with it. I don't know. Um, does that make sense to you? No, that one, that one doesn't actually. <laughs> okay. okay. So, all right. So I'm not, um, and, and I don't want to set anything up for concern saying, oh, great. That's the last thing I need, you know, legal this stuff, but not. <laughs> <Real>. it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, it's like, geez, Dean, wait a, but, but it's interesting <laughs> is that, and, you know, and sometimes it might be something very subtle, but there is something very, um, when it comes to, to, um, it's something referring to legal and I'm not, I'm not getting any clarification around it, but so the thing that I would share is if it doesn't make sense for you now, just stay open to it and see what comes forward for you. And then just go from there. It's, it's the biggest thing that I share with clients. Does that make sense? Yeah. Can I ask one thing? Is there anything, are you feeling anything from my mother at all? From your mom? Yes. Give me a sec here. What, what's, what's your mom's first name? Lenny. Lenny. Um, and can I ask, did your, uh, was your mom a smoker? Yes. Yeah. And did, uh, was, did your mom spend a, um, um, I shouldn't say a great deal, but um, did she spend some time in the hospital prior to, to passing? Yes. Yeah. So, because one of the things was, and last question for you is, um, do you know if your mom was intubated or does she had assistance with breathing uh, as well while she was in there? Yes. So, a throat, yes, because I can feel my, my whole throat is on fire right now. And it's not just from me talking all night. Um, and so, with that, I understand that that is her validation to you that she is around you um, and, you know, just letting you know that, you know, she is never far away. But, um, you know, and it's really interesting because she is a big supporter of you and always has been. Um, and she kind of grabs one of the things, the biggest thing that, you know, she's, She's like, she almost like she's coming into, I'm actually standing in my wife's office in our home. And um, she, it's almost like she comes in and she doesn't want to disturb me, your mom, right, Lenny? And she kind of comes in and she just kind of looks at me like trying to get my attention and like squeezes my hand just to let me know I'm here. And then she's like, okay, I'm good. And, I'm, <laughs> and so I'm understanding that it's just her way of saying that she knew that you were there and she it's just her way of thanking and letting you know. Do you understand that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, it's always interesting how, you know, our loved ones will communicate or sometimes they'll come back and they'll kind of squeeze a hand. A lot of times, you know, when somebody was passing or transitioning um, and it's hard for them to communicate, um, you know, um, you know, or even if they were nonverbal, they'll squeeze the hand. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. <laughs> yes, you're welcome. Well, she wanted me to ask you about me, but I don't know if I want to or not. <laughs> get me all crying. <laughs> uh, get 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 the vapor started. I call it. <laughs> right, especially a big old boy like me, people be like, Lord, listen, I'm crying like a baby. <laughs> be like, ah. no, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of curious now. I mean, if you, that is, if you know, you have the time, energy, or whatever it takes. No, nope, I know. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I'm okay. fine. I'm fine. So, okay. uh, Rodney, for you, you uh, are, are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready. Sir. Um, now you're ready, ready. So one of the first things um, that uh, kind of steps forward for you is I have a gentleman that steps forward and. Oh, I'll be damned. We lost him again. 
The energy is too strong. <laughs> <laughs> the force is too strong with this one. Yeah, uh, he, he'll call back because I'm sure he heard it because we heard it clear too. Oh, that was loud. <laughs> that was loud. Uh, let me see. I don't know whether to go ahead and type a message. Uh, call back, yeah, please. Call back. <laughs> call back, please. Left everybody on the edge on that one, didn't he? <laughs> so we're going to find out about the big boy. Click. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, my my fast thumb uh, actually since I'm I'm home wrestling the uh, the chillings uh, actually my son came up and and uh, I went to hit the mute button and my fat finger hit the uh, disconnect button so my apologies. Uh, That's all right. You know, I just figured you might say, nope. ain't gonna say it about Rob. <laughs> <laughs> First and foremost, um, you know, it was interesting, you know, I always say is I connect to, to angels first, but um, typically, but one of the things that I get for you is um, just a super huge um, energy coming forward on your dad's side of the family. Now, um, interesting, I'm like, um, seems like a, a normal enough gentleman. I'm like, um, can you share with me a little bit? And he uh, kind of makes mention that that uh, that he would have had a little. Uh, people gave him a hard time about um, if I'm understanding correctly. Um, it would have been like uh, kind of like a bigger. He had more of a pronounced nose and kind of bigger ears. And um, it kind of feels like uh, now. Is your is your dad still with? Uh, is is your dad in spirit, Rod? Yes, sir. Okay, and uh, was he a was he a smoker as well? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, and it's interesting because uh, he uh, just uh, what I understand what I what I would say in my best uh, northern expression was he was a good old boy and um, but at the same time just a very. Um, uh, good gentleman because that's you know the thing that um one of the things i keep on getting with him is that really uh you know that expression of a you know the 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 old way of doing things where a handshake meant a lot and you know look a man in the eye when he shakes his hand all that type of stuff um and uh so just a really uh a really big expression of that, but just a really big, uh, uh, and obviously a very big part of, of, of who you are. Does that make sense to you? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, for Rob, for you is that, um, you know, goes without saying you're, in... <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> your dad, he's quite the character. Cause, uh, and what's your dad's name? Can I ask? Uh, his name is, uh, Berlin. V -E -R -L -I -N. Berlin. Yeah. Okay, so he is uh, Berlin is is quite quite uh, funny gentleman because um, he uh, he kind of looks at me and he is like kind of looking around. He's like, "Well, hell, I didn't figure I'd be here." <laughs> and he starts laughing, and he was like, and he was like, "Hell, aren't you know?" It's almost like, "Aren't you gonna?" aren't you going to make me some, or, you know, you got anything to eat? And so it's almost like, <laughs> so he's almost wanting to go down to the kitchen. And, uh, and, but the thing is that he talks about is um, now one of the things that's interesting, uh, Rodney, is he talks about, he shows me balloons. Now, typically when a spirit shows me balloons, talking about a significant date, um, either just past or coming up. Now, was there? Did you guys just celebrate something recently? It could be like a birthday, anniversary, birth, or anniversary, or a birth or a death. Uh, just Mother's Day. Okay, it's just April. There was okay. So understand that even if there was an anniversary of like a passing, or even if there was a birth or whatever. Um, understand that um, 
that just understand that when we celebrate, they celebrate as well. So understand that he's still there. Um, you know, big proponent of that. The other thing is, is that he talks about, um, I keep on being shown a, uh, a pickup truck. And I don't know if, if uh, you've been, Rodney, if you've been looking at buying a pickup or, or if maybe there's a pickup that's still in the family or something, but um, is your dad a, was was uh was your dad a, a Ford guy? No, he had a Ford but he didn't like it and then he traded it off for a Chevy. <laughs> oh <laughs> okay, okay. All right, all right, okay. So all right, so very interesting. So but um you know and the biggest thing though that he you know obviously first and foremost talking about again uh just how much that uh you know, how proud of he is of you and that, uh, you know, I, and one of the things I want to share about readings is it's always the, the message of love is always there. That is usually the first and foremost message of really wanting to let us know, or them letting us know how much they love us. But, it, um, you know, uh, but the, the overriding principle of, of pride too, letting, letting us know just how proud of of us they are so and that's a big one with him he's really um can't understand or overstate that enough really wanting you to know that it doesn't feel like he was really vocal about that um kind of growing up or whatever so he just really wants you to know that um you know uh how proud of you he is so um and there's a lot of support uh, obviously again of uh of you um, from not just him, but others in spirit around you. So that makes sense. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. That beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Beautiful. And the other one that he talks about is the month of August um, is very significant. I don't know what's coming up this August for you or if it'll hold some special significance, but he talks about the month of August being very significant. Do you understand? Oh, yeah, that's uh, my son's birthday. It was his first grandchild. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. Beautiful. All righty. Well, beautiful. Any questions around that? No, I can't think of anything. I'm kind of sitting here <laughs> like, oh, you know, jawing and down. Right. <laughs> but I, yeah, right. About everybody does. Put every – put put everybody in, on the spot saying if you had the opportunity to ask somebody, uh, you know, a question that's deceased, well, you know, put somebody on the spot. But um, so, so yeah, beautiful. But, you know, and the thing is that, um, and of course, these readings, obviously, that I'm giving you guys are just a really quick snippet. It's just, you know, um, off the cuff, um, you know, on the fly here this evening that, you um, uh, that I'm doing a lot of times I'm when I sit with a, or doing a reading for a client, I'm typically sitting in my office, uh, you know, uh, you know, sitting there and doing a full concentration on, you know, the individual and, you know, whatever spirit stepping forward with them and, and everything. So, um, so yeah, so, um, uh, but in a sense, that's kind of how my readings work. And obviously, you know, galleries and such uh, work a lot different, um, you know. But, um, you know, but uh, so, yeah. Well, that was amazing. And, you know, and I, I thank you for that. I, I, you know, I've had other, you, bet. Like, you know, and uh, mediums on the show. And, you, you know, you kind of mm-hmm. ask them a question like that and they, they, uh, Veer off from it. They kind of veer off from yeah. it, and I, and I appreciate you going straight forward <laughs> for it. I mean, yeah, you know that. Yeah, you know, I, I I didn't get you on the show just to ask you that. I mean, I'm always curious. You know, me being in the right. paranormal, I, I just find yep. it fascinating. But we're running yep. out of time. But I'm going to ask you one more question, and for yes, uh, sir. we start breaking it down. Uh, have you ever had any experiences other than paranormal, such as uh, like crypto? Or any UFO encounters? Yeah, so nothing crypto. 
but I have yet, I guess I should say, I always, I don't want to paint myself in a corner because I find, I, I find out what, what that leads to. It's usually the universe <laughs> typically proves me wrong, right? Just about when yeah. you say, oh, no. Uh, but um, I did have a, a, what I call a UFO encounter um, going back a couple of years and um, where this gentleman actually became what I call possessed by a, by a alien, if you will. Um, and, uh, you know, and I actually got involved because he wanted, uh, his home doused and, or cleansed. And, uh, you know, I originally went in with the premise of, of, uh, you know, cleansing spirits from this guy's home and, uh, you know, quickly found out that, uh, you know, it wasn't spirits and things weren't, uh, going as they normally do when I typically go in and, and do a typical dousing um, and, you know, work with spirits or ghost busting, whatever you want to call it, um, and cleansing spirits from a home. And, um, and basically where I was able, where I was shown the, uh, the pupils of uh, what I would call reptilian pupils of, you know, a different race of, being, if you will, inside this gentleman. And uh, long story short, uh, through a lot of trial and error and a lot of learning um, is um, where uh, we got this gentleman the help that he needed. Um, But it was kind of at the, you know, it was kind of a a, a crash course (laughs) and in uh, the extraterrestrial and, um, and different things. Because really, to be honest, guys, you know, before that, I really couldn't, uh, I didn't really believe in that stuff. And, but, you know, I kind of laughed because I'm thinking, hey, Dean, you know, before you had your experience too, you didn't believe in mediums. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, so what's your point? You know, it's like, but the thing is, is that um, it was just, I, I couldn't quite go all the way there as far as believing in extraterrestrials. And it wasn't until um, that I had my experience that, um, you know, that I was like, holy crap, we're really dealing with, um, you know, pr- something pretty, pretty big here or pretty serious. And, um, so yeah, so it was, uh, something more extraterrestrial nature. And, and since I've had, you know, experiences with people with implants and, and different things, and it seems like when the universe opens one door, then you have more of the, similar experiences right um mm-hmm. you know and you know and it's like i always use the analogy of you know you think back to high school or when you got your first vehicle and whatever brand or model of your car and you never saw one on the road until you go and purchase that car or truck and then Correct. you see them all over right because now you're that comes into your reality or your focus and uh and that, and it seems like you have more of those experiences, and um, and so it, you know, it uh, did that. You know, I have more experiences dealing with that kind of stuff, and that opened up my awareness and education and and my understanding, at least at at this level, anyways. And and uh, in fact, last night I think I, uh, uh, it was interesting because that we're talking about this because I was just on the ufo undercover podcast last night um and it was interesting because uh listening to some of the guys talk because you know i was being educated as well listening to you know some of the information um you know so i'm always learning you know raven talked about you know refining and learning and um so uh it's always interesting but um i guess to answer your question is um, but, uh, no, I haven't had anything, uh, and actually there's, it's a kind of a growing organization. I know like, um, different, uh, Sasquatch, uh, groups and there's a group called she Squatchers here in the Minnesota, North Dakota area. And, um, that kind of the crypto type, uh, uh or crypto zoology type, uh, realm or whatever and so that's always interesting to me it's intriguing and i see those folks always at 
uh, paranormal expos or holistic expos. And, you know, I always like talking and learning and, uh, you know, um, so it's, it's always intriguing to me. So okay, Hope that answers that. Yeah. Oh yeah, that answered it. So, um, what are your plans for, you know, the rest of, uh, 2018, you got any projects, projects that you're working <laughs> on and also, uh, yeah. Got- and all that, you know, give your, if you don't mind, give everybody your contact information. They want to talk to you, sure. ask any questions. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, rounding out the year as of right now. Um, so, July 16th, I will be kicking off the Red White U Tour in the state, great state of Washington. Um, being flying out of uh, uh, Fargo, North Dakota, and I'll be going out to the West Coast starting my first leg of the tour. So I just remind everybody again, if if they want to figure out what the Red, White, New Tour is or if they want to sign up as a host uh, to to have me as part of, come to their city, their town um, as part of that tour, uh, certainly go to my website at themilitarymedium.com and, sign, and uh, there's a vent tab. You drop down the Red, White, New Tour and uh, sign up as a host. Um, so that starts July 16th, goes to the 22nd. Um, then in August, um, I will be in um, uh, Michigan uh, for the Paracon there in uh, in um, Sault Ste. Marie, uh, Michigan. Um, this will be my first year attending that Paracon um, convention. And then uh, in October... Then uh, in at Shooting Star Casino in Monoman, Minnesota, uh, right not far from about an hour or so from or two from where I live, um, they will be do, hosting another uh, Paracon, um, and they have been doing that for eight nine years now, and I'll be in attendance of that, and. Um, and obviously, I'll still be uh, putting together legs of the Red, White, New Tour, um, you know, going all over. I'm, I'm hoping to, as the winter approaches, I'm hoping to bring the tour actually down south. Um, so there's some uh, uh, some folks in the Alabama and Georgia area, and um, you know, even in the Blue Ridge Mountains area. So regardless of where you live, it doesn't matter where you live. Um, you know, if you want to be a host or if you think of somebody or know somebody that would be interested, uh, let me know. Uh, just go to my website again at uh, themilitarymedium.com and uh, sign up as a host. And then uh, also, if you're just interested in learning more about me, you just read uh, my bio or anything on the website. You can certainly do that. Also on YouTube, I have a YouTube channel. Um, you know, just uh, search Psychic Medium Dean McMurray. Um, and then everything that I do on Facebook or any videos that I make get uploaded to uh, YouTube. And then uh, check out episodes one and two of Off the Radar with the Military Medium. They're both lo- loaded up there. Um, one that I did live on location in Bismarck, North Dakota. The other I did, um, I think it was a Facebook live session. And the next episode three will be on I want to say the 20th of July, um, that will be live on location at a base center, Washington, uh, hopefully right on the beach, as I said before. Um, and, yeah, and then the last thing, if you feel guided and say, hey, I like this guy, I want to get a reading from him, uh, or thinking about inquiring about a class or anything, um, again, head over to my website, um, and there's actually a way to uh, contact me. Um, it sent, you can send me an email, um, or you can, uh, there's a book appointment, uh, button and you can, where I give readings by phone, Skype, email, um, or, you know, uh, zoom, whatever video phone is by use all kinds of technology. So, you know, the modern world today, so it doesn't matter where you live, what time zone will, will make her work. So. Um, reach out, say hi, or even jump over on Facebook and where I'm active, you know, 98% of the time at uh, Psychic Medium, Dean McMurray, the military medium. And uh, you can just certainly give me a message and 
saying, hey, uh, tonight on the radio show, um, great job or whatever, saying, you know, uh, or ask me questions or whatever. I'm more help, more than uh, more than willing to help people out in their journey and and uh, within reason, obviously. But um, but uh, I'm all about helping others develop their abilities and um, in the right direction. All right. Well, Dean, I, I appreciate you coming on the show. We got to get you back on the show because. I have about three more pages of questions to ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, we'll I, certainly look at. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say we'll certainly look at dates, Rodney, and we can look at a potential future future show. All right. Sounds good. Well, Dean, like like I said again, you know, thank you for coming on the show. Nothing but mad respect for you, and uh, uh, I guess I'll let you go and. and uh, and have a good night and, <laughs> you know, play with the kids. <laughs> or take your phone. All right. Well, thanks. Th- yeah, thanks, Raymond. Thanks, uh, Rodney. Thanks, everybody, for, for having me on. And uh, just want to thank your listeners, too, for, for being on tonight. So I'm listening. Okay. Sounds good. Sir, you have a good night. Like I said, take care and don't let Grandma kick you out of bed again. <laughs> Oh, uh, don't worry. Thank, yeah, uh, Grandma, we're good now. So, all right, guys, have a great night and take care. Stay safe. Uh, you too. Good Thank night. you. All right. Bye bye. Well, that's it. Uh, so uh, let's see here. Next Thursday night, uh, June twenty eighth, will be Aaron Oaks. We're going to finally try to get him back on the show after <laughs> what four tries. Uh, Aaron is the lone wolf paranormal investigator, so uh, uh, everybody look uh, look forward to that show and finally getting to talk to old boy. And everybody, thank you for listening, and y'all have a good night. Good night, everyone. Let's see here. Let me play the exit thingy. Oh, it says end of show. That's it for us tonight. I want to thank everyone that took the time to listen in. I'd like to give a big shout out to the Vibe Radio Network and to Ryan for putting up with us. Also to all the first responders and our men and women in the armed services, thank you for your service and the sacrifices that you and your families make every day to keep our great nation safe. Tune in next week to another exciting show starting at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Everyone can go to our Facebook page within the chaos and don't forget to like our page uh, to see upcoming guests along with past shows, postings, Or you can also go to uh, my website at www.blackdiamondps.org or blogtalkradio.com forward slash vibe radio network. Also, we have a YouTube channel, so go to YouTube, look up Within the Chaos for past shows. Thanks again. Until next week, everyone have a safe weekend and have a good night and love you all. Be careful out there.
Can a mountain sunrise awaken something deep inside us? Can a winding trail be the path to what we've been yearning for? In West Virginia, you can look for answers in rolling hills and hidden waterfalls and get back in touch with things that feel authentic and pure. Ask yourself if there's a feeling you've been missing. Then listen to the voice that's calling you to a place that's almost heaven. Find your version of heaven at wvtourism.com.